I want to try and tackle uh, probably the hardest question that most of you are, are asking at this point um, is what do I do at home with my kids right now? And if you don't have a training in Singapore mathematics, you don't have a training in classical education, um, there's a lot of uncertainty with how you might try to help support your kids learning at this point as far as trying to continue what's being done at their school, right? Um, you can, one of the things, one of the best things I think you can do is try to create some continuity for that student, right? So that what you're doing at home is in line with what they're learning at school. And so I wanna to try to give just a few ideas of some things you might do at home uh, that might fall in line with what the, the student is, is learning at school. And so I wanna take us back. If you haven't watched the video on what is classical mathematics, I'm gonna draw heavily on some of those uh, topics. So you might go take a look at that. Um, but really what we said classical mathematics is this fusion of the procedural and the conceptual together, as well as the fusion of student teacher-led and student-driven. Now there's a couple of things that are very difficult about this, right? What do we do without a, a real teacher here, right? Um, and But I want to give us some ideas about what you might do at home to try and fuse some of these things, right? Try to make, to try to still preserve some of the elements of classical mathematics on the home front, right? Try to take advantage um, to, to leverage some of the things that the students have already learned and have already grown accustomed to um, at, your, at your home. So um, I really want to think through maybe each of these four things and how you might try to get um, to simulate or try to get a, um, a vision for how they might be incorporated, right? So um, I think probably the easiest one to keep incorporating is this idea of the procedural, right? There's a lot of things you can do here uh, that can help students with their procedural knowledge, right? Uh, I'm thinking of math facts. I'm thinking of um, just sort of anything that's building um, building skills, right? Um, a lot of the worksheets um, or problems from the textbook um, here are gonna fall under this side of things where you're really working on kids' processes. If your student struggles with math facts, take this as a chance to say, I've got a couple months at home with my kid, I'm gonna give them all sorts of ways to build math facts. We've got videos on math facts, some games you can play with students. Um, you can grab flashcards, you can have them make flashcards, you can do all sorts of things um, to learn math facts, but that would be a phenomenal use of time and would really set them up for success. Um, there are certain curricula out there that do a really good job of trying to come up with all sorts of different um, kind of math fact ideas for students um, that you can really work on, on building some of their uh, procedural fluency, that they're able to kind of think second nature about these processes rather than having to re, you know, count on their fingers every single time they're doing a, an operation. So that would be a really great use of time um, as, a, as a parent, find some way to work on your kid's procedural fluency. But, what I don't, what I would encourage you to do is not let it stop there, not let it say, I'm going to just do these things. I want to think through about how to think about the concepts here, right? Um, and so really what you want to think through, especially with Singapore mathematics, um, is trying to get kids um, um, engaging in drawing pictures, right? Um, and, and, and go watch the videos about how to do bar modeling, how to do place value, how to do 10 frames if, you're a kinder, if you have a kindergartner, right? How to get them using these ideas of manipulatives. All right. um, and the other thing that I'll really, uh, that I'd really encourage here, and it's gonna get a little bit down into this idea, um, is get students doing some way to figure out how to explain the processes that they're doing. As a parent, this can be as easy as coming to a student who's working on some problems from the textbook and just having them explain to you what they did for that problem. Right? That doesn't take any effort at all as a parent. Just walk past and say, how'd you do this one? And have them walk you through the concepts that are there. You don't have to ask any follow-up questions. And their explanations might not, not make a ton of sense, right? Um, but having, getting, just getting them to go through the conceptual process, right? Getting them to explain what they're doing and why they're doing, right? Um, and just even asking, right? Why did you do that in that way, right? can even get the student taking some of these processes and explaining them, right? Ask them, how can we remember what five times six is, right? What's five times six like? Is it like five times five? 
what's different about it? And you can just get them thinking a little bit more conceptual about some of the facts and skills building that they're gonna be challenged to do, right? If you're a teacher watching this, and you're sending home a lot of things that are more skills based, see if you can send home a couple of questions that require students to reflect a little bit, require students to have a conversation with their parents, right? Even if you're a first grader, right? So teach them a math fact game and then have them teach it to their parents, right? Have them explain or even just have them write down their strategy or think about their strategy with their parents about what they did there, right? Um, so that you're taking some of these more skills heavy things and incorporating some of the conceptual questions, right? Don't lose the conceptual even as we're shifting into this homeschool or online format, right? It's easy to do these kind of things and I think we're going to have, find some ways to have some robust skills building opportunities, which I would encourage you to do, but find some way to incorporate some of these conceptual ideas as well, um, whether you're a teacher or a parent. The other thing I want to think through here is this fusion of teacher led and student driven, right? Um, and parents, if you're watching, you need to become this role in the teacher student idea, right? It takes two people to actually have a conversation here, right? And your teachers can't, for the most part, have the conversations. Um, and so, Right? Just thinking through some basic questions that you can ask uh, that you don't need to have any math knowledge about that are going to generate some conversation. So if you're thinking about how, what you might you do at home, the main thing is to have conversations about the mathematics with your students. Right? Uh, and that's going to be the most classical thing you can do. You can play games with them. You can work on their math facts. You can just give them a chance to work on their own. But whatever you're doing, engage them in some kind of conversation, right? Whether they're a kindergartner or a 12th grader, find some way to converse with them, right? And some basic questions, right? Um, just, again, remembering mathematics being the art of explanation, just ask them to explain to me what you did. All right? Why? Did you do it that way? Even just asking which of these problems was the hardest and why? Which was the easiest and why? Right? Uh, and just, you know, asking students, I mean, asking students what their strategies are. One of the best moments I've ever had in classical education was playing a game of war with a kindergartner, right? And war is just easy. You turn over cards and you see which one's bigger and which one's not. And at the end of the game, I asked this kindergartner, what was your strategy during the game? The game has no strategy, right? And the kindergartner basically went for about a full minute or two listing their strategies about what they were trying, you know, I tried to get a card that was very close to yours, but a little bit higher, you know, and when I had a war, I was really trying to get this high card at the very end and you know it's just great for them to be explaining those things you know you if when you get students talking about the mathematics you've already won as a teacher as a parent right um, and so the best thing you can do as a parent is to really engage in these kind of conversations with your students it doesn't really matter what you're doing right um, but finding them just to ask some of these basic questions right the other big one right that you can try to incorporate a little bit, and I'll end here, right, is this idea of what if. What if the number was one larger? What if it was one smaller? What if you had this instead of this? What would you do then? Just these, these cost you nothing here as a parent. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to do anything. But you can engage your children in conversation, right? Um, you're shifting the academic community from the classroom where they're going to be having these dynamic conversations with teachers and classmates, right, around these meaningful things. And you're shifting that locus or that center of education into the home, right? Um, and so don't just turn your kids loose to do their own math facts and skills building. Find some way to engage them with some kind of conversation. Uh, I promise you it will be well worth your while, both for the student's sake and just for the sake of, of, of having good conversations among families.